Greetings, Zoe. I told you last week that by today, I would have an update on actions Zoe would take to respond to the current racial unrest. I've spent the last few days conversing with people in law enforcement, ministry, criminology, and politics to clarify some initial first steps toward change. Before I share those steps, I want to applaud all the people who are protesting peacefully for change. There are many upset about the looters and vandalizers, but I don't think they represent the majority of people in the streets. I know there are people who are upset about the property damage and theft, and I'm one of them. But please tell me what other things people could have done to secure the world's attention like they have now. I don't rationalize the violence. I don't support the violence. I don't support the vandalism. I don't support the theft. But we've trained people to be violent because it seems as though we don't respond to anything else with as much seriousness. What we're looking at now is the cost of apathy. This is the cost of our indifference. The one positive thing about what's going on is that people's ears are now wide open. Even some of the more conservative among us are willing to listen. What's clear to me is that there are two sides of the coin of political change, symbolically represented by our nation's two most, well, really our two most important documents, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. The Declaration represents the breaking up of government. The Constitution represents the building up of government. Friends, after a long night, there's always a morning after. And here at Zoe, we're early risers. You're gonna see us at dawn on the front lines of a national rebuilding process. Now the steps I'm about to outline are likely things you've heard before, but the thing is, these are things Zoe wasn't doing. But starting now, that's going to change. And as you know, there's no time like the present. So the first step we're going to be involved in is engage in a massive voter registration program. Let me tell you, after all the protests, we still have to vote. November is coming, and we have to make sure that people are going to the polls. You know people died and protested so that we can have the right to vote? And there are so many of us that, in part because of how much they've seen, how discouraged they've been by the system, that they don't vote. Friends, we cannot abandon this precious gift that other people have died and bled for. So Zoe's going to be involved in a Get Out the Vote campaign. There are plenty of organizations already doing that. We're going to join the fight and make sure we increase the number of people who are going to the polls and make sure that the polls are voter friendly. The second thing we're going to do is offer accountability for our local officials. This is tied to the voting issue because so many of us are focused on the federal government. Many of us are focused on President Trump and the things he says and the things you don't like, but the reality is that most of our police governance is not at the federal level, it's at the local level. Hey, I've been guilty of going to the polls completely focused on the major candidates, but not knowing who this judge is or this counter super, county supervisor is. Those are the kinds of people who affect the local conditions. There is no national standard for policing. There are all, all these decisions are made locally, and it's always these, it's often these local officials who we don't pay attention to who are making these decisions. And many times their election is based on a few thousand and sometimes just a few hundred votes. Where Zoe's going to be involved in making sure we're informed about who's running for office and who's making the decisions regarding our local policing. And we're going to make sure we put a fire under their rear ends. So whoever's running for county supervisor, you better put on an extra pair of underwear because that seat is going to be hot. We're going to be right there asking questions, making sure that our communities know what's going on. And on the front end, we're making sure our local officials are doing the right thing. The third thing we're going to do is be much more engaged in community, community policing. President Obama has outlined a 150-page a, a document. When he was in office, he took some action on some community policing reforms um, that we can still implement. 
And so we're going to take action with community policing, which basically involves a, a, a stronger involvement of the community in terms of accountability, but also public relations. There are so many police officers that are doing good work. Some of them I'm related to. I talk to the sheriff that works at the office that, 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 that responds to changes p policing in our area, and she's doing a fantastic job. You know what the problem is? The public doesn't know about it. Whoever is the PR person for the police, they need to be fired because the community doesn't understand what police do. And so we're confused about your tactics and your policies. We need to have transparency and accountability, but more importantly, we need to build trust. Friends, let me tell you, nothing moves faster than the speed of trust. The fourth thing we're going to do as a church is we're going to begin to address many of these matters regarding racial unrest during Sunday evenings. As a pastor, I've got to decide how I'm going to plan my sermons, and I decide, am I going to continue to focus on our standard themes, or am I going to address some of the political issues that we need to address? And of course, I need to do both. And so I can't always on Sunday morning address all of those things. So we're going to be producing some things for Sunday evening that will begin to inform us and invite us to take informed action that will make a difference. So be on the lookout for more information about that. And then finally, the last thing that Zoe is going to do, I shouldn't say the last thing, it's the last thing I'm stating on my list, but the, the final thing I will say in terms of our first steps is that we're going to start a fundraising campaign focused on developing our young people into agents of spiritual change and into responsible civic leadership. Our student ministries and young adult ministries are understaffed. And if we want to give our young people an alternative, we have to put our money where our mouths are. More information on that to follow, but Zoe, I'm just letting you know, get prepared. I know it's a pandemic, and some people say it's wrong to ask people to give money in the midst of a pandemic. Hey, it's unsafe to be out in the streets protesting in the midst of a pandemic, but that needs to happen. So we need to make sure that we no longer are saying that we don't have enough money to fund our young people because we, we ha they're out there in the streets asking, where is the church? Well, I'm telling you, we're right here. We're right here. And we're going to continue to be here being agents for change. Zoe, thank you for your patience as we seek God and take action together. Keep us in your prayers and stay posted on how you can get involved. The Lord, we sure do need